rear view. Right. 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 Council's in session. I'd like to apologize to everybody in advance. This is my first meeting <laughs> as Mayor Pro Tem, so be kind. <laughs> uh, uh, invocation by Reverend Carla Wogan. I think I know her. <laughs> that would be embarrassing if you got it wrong. <laughs> he goes to my church, which is why it would be embarrassing. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, send down upon those who hold office in this city the spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice that with steadfast purpose they may faithfully serve and promote the well-being of all people. Grant, O oh Holy God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially those gathered here this night, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. Amen. 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 Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, special presentations tonight. Any special presentations? I don't think we have any. Um, persons requesting to be heard? Nobody wants to be heard tonight. I don't hear listen to you, Mr. Oh no, 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 no. Please, please. Wherever this is just a hobby. Uh, <laughs> uh, approval of minutes. Do I have a motion? Make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um start walking out. Start walking out. <laughs> uh, ratification of second reading. Move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approve. <clears throat> um, you got to give us an opportunity to vote nay. To oh, vote okay, nay. please. Just, <laughs> oh, just a <laughs> uh, Yeah, that was unanimous. Anybody? Uh, anybody against that? No. Okay. Um, consent agenda. Mayor Pro Tem Zagaroli, um, I'd like to exclude. No move. Uh, or move. Move to exclude um, item A for discussion. Um, I, um, th this relates to a project specifically known as the Hilton Garden Inn of which I, I don't have a uh, ownership interest in, but I was involved in the um, construction management um, of the project and accordingly of the actual road will be dedicated tonight. So I'd like to uh, um, move that uh, uh, council exclude me, excuse me from voting on this. All right. so I would ask also completely separate item that item F be removed from consent agenda. <clears throat> All right. All right, Alderman Lale has made a motion to excuse him from voting. Is there a second on that? No second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I move we approve the consent agenda with the exception of item F. Second. Exclude A also? No, no. he's just no. confused. Himself. He just excludes since he's gone. Okay. Second? Second. Are you? Oh, well, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It unanimous. Passed. Um, so just for clarification on item A, uh, that road was, although it was built privately, was built to the City of Hickory standards, is inspected by city engineers during all phases of construction, and that's a typical practice in the city, uh, so that when the city takes the road, 
accepts the right of way and accepts the roadway. It's already to our standards and uh, becomes part of the city's uh, grid system. So just as an FYI to everybody how that process works. On item F, um, it's a special event application from uh, the DDA and, and this Connie Kincaid Executive Director for Oktoberfest 2015. So we're barely into 2015 and uh, Ms. Kincaid is already lining up her events uh, for the downtown for that year. <clears throat> what I'm asking council to do is to uh, actually amend what was in your uh, agenda packet. Uh, we had a staff oversight as we put the agenda together. And the application as it reads in the agenda uh, would basically have the hours that it had two years ago, which as you remember from last year, there was a significant discussion about, which is uh, the event going until 11.30 p.m. Um, what staff would recommend is that uh, we keep the same hours as you approved in for the 2014 event, uh, which is that alcohol sales uh, are discontinued at 10.30 and the event uh, ends at 11 p.m. And as you recall, we had significant conversation about that last year and found you all found that to be a, a compromise with public safety uh, interests as well as, uh, as the event. So uh, staff would recommend council approve with that uh, amendment. And let me be specific, the days are October um, 9th, uh, so it would be from 12 p.m. until 11 p.m. with alcohol sales discontinuing at 10.30 and October 10th from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. with alcohol sales discontinuing at 10.30. Move Which approval of uh, the amended item F with the new hours. Second. All in favor? Yeah, uh, just as a matter of discussion on all these, um, in terms of the documentation, her uh, the certificate of insurance that she provided as part of her backup expires in October of 2015, so she would have to just as a point, since we'll, we'll put it on the record, she needs to Thank you. update that certificate. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimous. All right. Um, I'd like to uh, introduce the uh, Boy Scouts this evening. Would they please stand up and recognize? I'd like to recognize what troop they're from. Mr. 300. All right. And uh, all of you are. Troop 300? Yes. Well, I'm working on uh, citizenship in the community. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Well, introduce yourself so we know who you are. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead. I'm, I'm the Scott Master. I'm Casey Miller. I'm David Cajon. I'm David T. I'm Dave Crooks. I'm Hunter Crooks. Right. And the Scout Master is? Foreman Harley. Okay. Thank you. Good to have you on. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think we uh, did items removed from the consent agenda. We'll check there. Uh, informational item. Do you have any informational items? No informational item tonight? No. Nope. Uh, new business, public hearings? No public hearings. Uh, department reports. We do have departmental reports. Uh, the first one, the first one, I will uh, ask uh, city's engineer and uh, public services director, Mr. Chuck Hanson, to come to the podium. Uh, this is an agreement between uh, NCDOT and the city uh, for uh, <clears throat> enhancements, improvements to uh, the intersection of uh, Sandy Ridge Road and 29th Avenue. Mr. Hanson. Thank you, Mr. Barry, Mayor Pro Tem uh, Zagaroli, members of council. Um, before you tonight is uh, really requesting uh, permission to enter into a municipal agreement between the City of Hickory and the North Carolina Department of Transportation. Uh, we've done projects similar to this in the past. This one sort of falls under the federal money that we know in slang terms as CMAQ, C-M-A-Q, which is uh, congestion mitigation and air quality monies. Some of those monies that as we pay gas taxes, it goes to the federal government. This is one of the ways it comes back to us and it's earmarked for projects that uh, 
have a goal of reducing congestion and uh, improving traffic flow, this with a goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, one of our probably most uh, uh, intersections that we have a little congestion, obviously work hour traffic, uh, peak traffic time is the intersection of Sandy Ridge Road Northeast and 29th Avenue Northeast. That was which we knew would be compounded as McDonald Parkway <coughs> And uh, that that is held held true to expectations, and this is a, a project to help help work on on that goal. Now, both of those roadways are North Carolina Department of Transportation roadways. There's nothing in their next seven eight year program that even shows funding close to doing anything with with that improvement or, or that that area. So, this was a way that we saw back in 2009, sort of looking into the future and now. This is a way to help put some money towards that intersection as an improvement. Um, so this project started almost five years ago, if you want to say it that way, in terms of getting things lined up for this funding. This funding is sort of a annual appropriation so uh, through, through the uh, federal DOT program, so we're not sure whether we're going to get it or not. And once something's uh, awarded, then we sort of have a window of time to do. This money actually becomes available to us this this year, and then we have a, essentially a five-year window to spend it. And so that's sort of the life of this project that we're talking about. Um, so with that that said, uh, CMAC we just talked about uh, the goal is, is essentially this: the federal grant, 2.153 million. It requires a 20% match, $538,250, which will come out of the uh, general fund fund balance. Again, this one's been sort of target in our CIP for the last couple of years. Um, we'll have about a $30,000 uh, cost for actually designing the signals, the new signals that'll have to go at the intersection itself. Uh, and uh, the in-house, our in-house engineering department surveying is actually doing the design and so again that's some in-house kind of services you actually apply for these monies and so this was a basically a grant type application so there was other projects competing against it and so with our in-house participation uh, and uh, the level of greenhouse gas emissions that it would help reduce those are the things that that weighed in for us us actually getting uh, an opportunity to get this money so again the uh, Total contribution from the city is about 570,000. So you're looking at a, a 2.7 uh, million dollar project by the time by the time we're uh, done out there. Uh, what's included? What can be included in that money is uh, right of way acquisition, utility relocation. Again, there's utility lines up and down both sides of the road, and of course project construction. What's not included? They won't reimburse us for our own engineering. Those kind of things are, are the signal design. So that's uh, that's five years on one page. Um, Mr. Hanson, will those new utilities be above ground or underground? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be probably both. Um, it's going to be more than that project to put them all underground. It's going to be more than the road project. Uh, we're, we're basically just now to the stage where we know sort of what the project is going to look like and we're getting ready to meet with the utility companies to see what, what we can get to. Uh, hopefully some will choose that, yeah. We've seen some, some of the telephone cable folks go underground, some of the power, that's pretty major power along that road. I doubt the power will go underground. Uh, uh, but again, maybe we can consolidate some things on one side of the road and clean, clean it up. And I'll show you a little cross section here in just a minute. Um, Endpoints for the project. This is this is Sandy Ridge Road. This is north. In this case, sort of off to the right-hand side of the page. Uh, 29th Avenue. This is Lowe's Grocery Store. The com complex there to give you a reference point. This is 21st Avenue. Uh, this is the four-lane section of 8th Street Drive uh, back towards our recreation headquarters, back in towards uh, Lenore University. We have a have an issue with this intersection and an issue with this intersection at, at peak times of the day and those that travel it understand what I'm saying there. Uh, this project will essentially continue this four lane section where it leaves here all the way out to 
29th Avenue. It will do some lane work on the approach, other three legs of that approach to allow uh, increasing some turning lane uh, type availability and getting some right turns out of the way, allowing some dual left turns in some places. So again, I'm not going to bore you with the details of what that actual design is, but this is sort of the end, this is sort of the end point of, of this project. And by the time you widen this back and you widen this back, there's only a little bitty short section in the middle that didn't make sense to four lane that whole segment of roadway through there. So what does it look like uh, when we're done? This is just your basic cross section. If you can imagine Sandy Ridge Road as we're, say, looking north, <clears throat> that's about what you see at Sandy Ridge Road. It's a two-lane two -lane section of roadway. We'll be adding essentially a, a lane on each outside of that, so we'll have four 12-foot lanes, curb and gutter, utility strip, and then a sidewalk on each side beyond that. So there, this, this will include sidewalks on both sides in that area, too. Um, no median. No median. No turn. No turn lane. It'll be just what you think of as an extension of 8th Street Drive all the way out to 29th Avenue. So in front of Max Recreation, Parks and Recreation headquarters all the way out to, to Lowe's Foods uh, with sidewalks on both sides. So, uh, and, Okay, so um, there's no sidewalks out there now. So that's correct. Five, that is fabulous. There will be correct. a sidewalk. And there is lots of heavy power. But we need, in my opinion, the city's doing the design on this. The city needs to anticipate a modern roadway to the extent that uh, it, it probably needs to have a bike lane. Um, the, the tough, don't disagree with you, the, the tough part about that is what do you do on each end of this short segment? You know, I, know, I understand that, but that's sort of back to the sidewalk thing. You know, if somebody develops a piece of property on a public street, they build a sidewalk, and it might be a sidewalk to nowhere. But that's how we start. And that's I don't, right. I, I think that, um, if the city's designing this, that uh, there ought to be some consideration given to um, to a bike lane. I, you know, I, I don't disagree that yeah. it would be unlikely somebody's going to go uh, load up a bike and pedal down that little section of street. Right. But you got to start somewhere. Right. And and we we've tried to give that thought up to this point. Not saying we can't do it. We also have one other challenge with this one. Uh, those familiar with the area. The church that sits here, <clears throat> there's a high tension Duke power line that runs sort of east west through there. We're going to have to move one of those towers. Now, the good news is that tower is a square box tower, not one of the angel looking towers that, that are real huge. Uh, so, we get into some tight right of way issues related to that, and that was that's a uh, one, one of the one of the challenges about going any wider is, is piece of it. that that we're still finishing the design we're not 100 percent done with it but nothing can happen until we really start this process and keep it moving to get the money coming our way to to work for the next five years if you will so would it be possible to you said sidewalks on both sides maybe make one of those a bike lane we can look at it yeah. I mean that's I, this isn't this isn't to finalize a design standard by any means, okay? But we're trying to we're trying to work within reason of what we know are house front doors, other utility issues, what we have left between what the edge of this this line will be and where the existing residents are out there, uh, some business and then room for utilities. I mean, it's, there's it gets tight real quick. So uh, when's the completion date of this? Then it, there is no one set date for this for this yet. Okay. The way this grant works is is we're again we're sort of ahead of the game a little bit in design. Once this happens, then the way this reads is there's five years to do the project. So what we have to do in that five years is finish the design, acquire the right of way, bid it, and, and build it. Wow. If you if you go backwards just a little bit, this is real similar to the same way we just upgraded our traffic signal system. Same types of money worked about over about a again. That was about an eight year project by the time we sort of started and worked in the field on it for the last three three years. So, um, but it, but at this stage and, and excuse me, Mr. Lay, I would definitely. I mean, you've I mean got, that's part of what we're trying to figure out how to do too. That's, right. that's, you've got uh, multifamily at Argyle Place at Catawba right. Ridge. 
that is, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, that's designated a neighborhood core. It is. That particular intersection, which means high density right. residential, right. which would indicate the need for yeah and and multi mode you know, uh, transit. Yep. Yeah. And and again, it may be not so much a a it may be a signed bike versus a true lane. Right. Uh, but but that's that's part of what again that multi mode getting to you know this commercial area is, is important. Right now we have people walking through front yards. Yeah. At least we can, and some of them walking in the road. At least this will get them out of the road walking from that standpoint. Let me ask you a couple of things. On, um, <coughs> I mean, the traffic backup, I mean, it looks like we're putting a lot of emphasis on Sandy Ridge and not much on 29th. When the yeah. actual backup, I mean, I go home every day, that, that, and then the backup comes almost all the way down if I don't down here it comes out to yeah to the right uh, and, uh, and this is living and again the, the the bottleneck is not so much the road at this point in time it is the intersection it is and so what we're doing is is we're adding capacity through this intersection that's what this design is really doing okay, so again it's, it's not a case where we can widen four lane this section four lane this section we've got a we've got to add laneage each way through this intersection to allow more cars through the same amount of green time. Is people that want to come that are going uh, west on 29th that want to turn north on Sandy Ridge are cutting through that office building. Right. And, and right now your straight through lane is the same lane. Somebody going straight blocks up three people making right. a right hand turn. This solves that. Secondly, any money in project? Here's, here's exactly what you just spoke of, Mr. Meisner. Here, here's, here's this eastbound on 29th. There's a left turn and then a straight right. Right. The end, end product will have a, a dedicated right, a through and a left. Those right, right on reds can, can go. So yeah, that, and also those traveling um, uh, the other way on 29th. See, they're cutting through that uh, little office project and state employees credit rather because there's no right turn lane. Right. That's same same That'll same start. answer here. Yeah. Any money on the project on lands for landscaping? It, not at this point. We're still trying to fit things within what we think we can fit between building obstructions <laughs> if you will uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll have we will find even internal money to do landscaping along with it but but at this point that's that hadn't quite reached the top of the yeah. top of the ladder yet yeah, let's, I'm glad we're working on it because it's much needed otherwise we're still 15 years away waiting on DOT to tackle some of this area probably again it's not something that's going to show up tomorrow but it's something we started in 09 10 time frame working through the MPO, getting it approved locally, getting it put together, getting it submitted. It's finally made its way up to the funding year for the, these monies and made its way to the to the contract point. Well, good work on uh, I know you meet because I see you at, uh, occasionally we'll cross paths at the MPO, you know, on when on what on uh, uh, Wednesday a month yeah, yeah. Um, and I know that this has been on your radar and you've been pushing this so it's really good so obviously from a staff standpoint we'd recommend approval <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. and let, let us keep proceeding great comments thank, thank you staff's ask, asking you for approval of the municipal agreement between the city of Hickory and the state NCDOT for this project yes correct? sir so moved second all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed it's unanimous. Next department report, I'll ask the city's community development manager, Mr. Dave Leonetti, to come to the podium. <clears throat> Mr. Leonetti is going to present to uh, council a recommendation for an extension of a uh, vacant building revitalization grant, which was actually used uh, for demo to Shuford Mills. Thank you, Mr. Barry. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Zagaroli, members of council, Mr. Crone. Tonight, uh, I have a fairly brief presentation. Uh, about a demolition grant application that you all approved a little over a year ago. Uh, I think it was in mid-January of 2014. I'll give you a little background. This is the we, this is the third one uh, that's potentially uh, paid for for these demolitions. We've done I think 11 now total. 
since 2011 when the, the, uh, when the guidelines were redone total, including rehab and the demolition, but this is the third demolition project. Um, at this point, they allowed for 20,000. Um, now, uh, back in September, I think you all reduced the amount to 15,000 for demolition, but this one is the, the old uh, guidelines. This project is at 1360, that's not 13th Street Northeast, it's Highland Avenue Northeast, sorry. Um, the original grant was approved in 2014, and in September you granted an extension to add 120 days to the project. One of the stipulations to that extension was a commitment to restore a portion of the building wall from the main building, to kind of have, at least give a little bit of a sense of the building that they had, uh, they had to demolish there. <laughs> Due to delays in steel fabrication, and uh, the applicant, therefore, is requesting an additional 60 days to complete the site grading and the wall restoration. This is the, the site um, as it was in the most recent aerial photograph, but this has all been demolished at this point. But it's the intersection of 15th Street, um, right before you get to Springs Road along Highland Avenue. The, uh, it's a little bit hard with the lights to see. This is the this is the remaining portion of the wall that is going to be uh, repaired through the uh, the rest of the rehabilitation process. You can see here where there's some um, jagged portions of the wall. They have had bricks delivered to the site that um, that will be used to smooth off that and um, make it a. Um, straight line, essentially. This is the rear, this is the steel that uh, took an extra kind of two months uh, in the request. That's what they had said, that the, the delay for the steel, um, basically since that wall was sitting there unsupported, they wanted, they, they couldn't really run their, their demolition trucks past it because they were worried that there was nothing really holding up that wall uh, at that point, and they didn't want to jeopardize the, the security of that portion. Um, as you can see, the, the site, the demolition portion, uh, is essentially complete. There's some minor grading and filling that, uh, that Neil Grading is working on completing in the next few weeks, and then they're going to sow and seed the uh, seed and straw the rest of the site uh, in, the, in the next few weeks. Do they have any plans at all other than just grass? Um, at this point, I think eventually maybe some possible redevelopment of the site for parking or something else. But as you can see, the actual width of the site is very, uh, mm -hmm. is very narrow. So with the railroad right away there and the right away for Highland Avenue, there's limited redevelopment potential in terms of building construction there. You might be able to get something small on this part where it's a little bit wider. Um, and then, you know, potentially get permission from the railroad to use the, the remainder of the parking. Okay. Is that wall going to be used for anything else other than just like a historical? Just parking? decorative at this point. Okay. I didn't know if they were going to add to that. Yep. Oh, and I should note that they are going to punch out the the old, the, the windows that were, were bricked in. Those are going to be punched out and oh, just be nice. um, open to the other side. So that will actually... It'll be less of a giant brick wall and more of you'll be able to see south over the to the other side of the railroad tracks. With, with that, um, staff does recommend approval. The 60-day extension would uh, would go forward from the expiration date of February 1st for the grant, so they would have um, 60 additional days to complete the app to complete the work described in their application. Would there not be enough brick in those windows that they take out to fill in the holes at the top? They wanted to use an older style uh, oh. brick because the, the, as far as I know, the, yeah. you can see the brick in the wall does not quite match. Oh, okay. It's a newer, uh, newer brick from, yeah. when they I think, it. probably the 50s or so, yeah. if I had That's to guess. Makes sense. You gotta put another brick in the wall. Very good. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, Y'all were thinking it, so I had to yeah. say. <laughs> Staff is asking for the second amendment that would extend the deadline for the completion of the demolition and the site restoration for 60 days from.
February 1st, 2015, and agree to continue with the grant in the amount of $20,000 upon completion of the site restoration and wall rehabilitation? Yes, sir. Well, I'll put that in the form of a motion if that's. I'll second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that should have next department report, I'll ask uh, Assistant City Manager Warren Wood to come to the podium and present the quarterly financial report. Mayor Pro Tem Zagaroli, members of City Council, Mr. Barry, Mr. Crone. We've got six months of our fiscal year under our belt, and I've got numbers from uh, July through December uh, that we'll look at so we get a really good idea of how we're doing so far this fiscal year. And we'll jump right into the general fund. Looking at the revenues received year to date, we're at 49.5%. Um, five year average says we should be at 57.5%. This is good. You're going to see a theme. We're starting to see a little bit of positive in our, in our revenues. Uh, on the expenditure side, we have spent or encumbered 52.5%. Our five year average says we'll be about 50.5%. But when you take the encumbrances out and just look at revenues over expenditures, uh, we have collected $6.7 million more than we've spent. The five-year average says we've bought a bit 4.6, so we're doing really well so far through the fiscal year. Um, and again, that's hopefully you're going to see a theme with, with, with that. The water and sewer fund, which makes up about 25% of the city's budget, the general fund is 50% of the city's budget. Uh, with half the year complete, they've received 42, about 43% of their revenues. Just keep in mind, April, May, and June are big water consumption months, so even though we're halfway through the year and not halfway on our revenues, it's not, not alarming. We should be at about 46.6%. Uh, on the expenditure side, um, we have spent or encumbered about 40 per, 40 and a half percent five-year average says we'll be at 47.5 but when you take the encumbrances out again uh, we have collected 1.6 million dollars more than we've spent so far in the water and sewer fund the five-year average says we'll be at about 600,000 so again doing well uh, on the whole um, with our bottom line in both the general fund and the water and sewer fund this is our property tax collections through six months, July through December. Um, we're right here, 17.7 million. We've really seen some increase in folks. I don't know that our tax base has increased to that degree, but in terms of folks' ability to pay or willingness to pay early or earlier in the year, we're, we're doing really well. Um, highest we've been in quite a while. So property tax collections so far are, are strong. Building permit activity, you can see with this anomaly here, you can see the trend during the course of the recession was down. Last year we had a decent year through, this is through uh, six months. Uh, last year we had a decent year through six months. This year um, we're running a little bit behind, but I looked at January's numbers. Uh, in December we did $10 million worth of permitting, which is really strong. January we did $10 million worth of permitting. So we're really when you do the comparison, we're really slightly ahead through seven months compared to where we were this time last year for, well, for seven months. So that's good. What was the reason for the outlier there? That, that was the, that was the uh, Catawba Valley Medical Center, $30 million. <laughs> I don't know I say that every time. $30 million. Uh, I think you tell us every time. Yeah, I do. So, you may just set me up with that. <laughs> um, but anyway, so building permit numbers uh, through December, good. And finally, sales tax revenue, also good. Uh, this was, you know, our, I guess our economic peak in terms of uh, sales tax generation, 08, 09, which seems a little bit strange, but it was. Um, battery's dying in this thing. Um, you can see we're almost where we were at the peak uh, back here. So we're at, uh, we've seen strong revenue growth through, this is actually five months. We don't have November's numbers yet. Uh, or excuse me, December's numbers, but this is through five months, and again, we're, we're doing well. Sales tax collection, strong, uh, good increase there. Any questions so far? Let's go one more slide. Just be keeping this in mind, we talked about this at a previous meeting recently. Um, we talk about budget considerations for the upcoming year, countywide reval. We know what the numbers did there. Revenue neutral is about 54 cents uh, for us. We're still with the, dealing with the loss of the privilege license. There is some conversation. There are some conversations going on at the state level related to that. I don't know where that's going to end up. 
Um, don't have any clarity on that at all yet. Uh, we're going. We have a manager's conference in the next couple of days, so we're going to find out more uh, from the league uh, directly on what we're probably in for related to that. Um, we you know we appropriated the additional fund balance for some street resurfacing and some other things. We need to think about how we're going to move forward with that. We've got other operational increases. Of course, like we said before, there's no real impact in terms of the bond referendum uh, for the upcoming uh, fiscal year, but more than likely the year after there will be. So with that, I'll take any questions or comments. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I think we have uh, appointments of boards and commissions at this point. Um, one of the exciting things is the, the bond appointments. Um, I will start with Sarah. Would you uh, would you please announce who Mayor Wright has appointed for the uh, bond commission? Yes. Um, his four appointments are. Allison Holtzman, Mike Thomas, Stacy Rash, and Charlie Dixon. All right. Brad? Uh, okay, so um, I would like to uh, offer uh, for consideration um, the appointment of Nick Walden, 111 7th Avenue Northeast. Vernon Tarleton, 926 2nd Street Northeast. Catherine Rogers, 931 Fifth Avenue Northwest. And Michael Bale, 1965 Robin Wood Road. Bale. And Yadi has mine because I wasn't sure I was going to be here tonight, but mine are uh, Jennifer Clark, um, Blake B. Watts. Jennifer Bean and Gail Schwartz. And uh, my picks from uh, Ward 5 are Bert Wyatt, Frank Cheryl Young, Jeff Hale, and Alan Barnhart. Okay, I'd like to offer for his nominees Anthony Laxton, James Tilton, Norman Cook, and Patricia Bowman. My appointments from Ward 4 are going to be Jerisha Farr, Susan Walker, Ed Fothering, and David Roberts. And mine for are Julie Chang, Paige Brigham, Alan Jackson, and Rob Dickerson. And then uh, the boards and commissions have all been able to meet and take action uh, in the last two weeks as you uh, asked them to. And uh, the Business Development Committee has uh, appointed Dana Chambers, and again, these are ex officio voting members in one year terms. The uh, Catawba County Chamber of Commerce, uh, Will Locke. Citizens Advisory Committee, uh, Michael Holland. Uh, Community Appearance Commission, Charlie, Charles Hayes. Community Relations Council, Adelia Parado Ortiz. Uh, Hickory International Council, Hani Nassar. Hickory Regional Planning Commission, Shauna O'Brien. Historic Preservation Commission, Tom Dobbins. Uh, Library Advisory Board, Carolyn Sinclair. Parks and Rec Commission, Dean Proctor. Public Art Commission, Jennifer Helton. Recycling Advisory Board, Norm Mears. Uh, University City Commission, Ryan Edwards and the Youth Council, Mr. Andrew Howard. Um, are we going to have a drawing on one, two, and three year? Uh, we make a I think first, or do we need to make first a motion to consider a motion to approve them all? And okay. then I'll make a motion to approve Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is there a second on that? Yeah, yeah I did. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Second. All right. So the mayor and I had had a conversation um, about how do you go about putting them in the one, two, and three year slots, which is in your ordinance to make sure that you have a, a staggered term. Um, in that conversation, we thought, he, he thought primarily, I'll give him the credit, that uh, we just do a random drawing right here at the council meeting. So uh, 
uh, you know, to avoid any sense of, well, why did I get a one year or two year? Just so I believe uh, Deputy City Clerk is, uh, is ready to do that. So she's got the names that you all just uh, approved and cups with each of your wards and the mayors. So she'll pull out the first ones for Mr. Lale, and this will be the one and two year terms, and then the other two will be the three year terms, if that's okay with City Council. Mm -hmm. okay. Mike Bell for one year. Berman Charlson, one two, and two year. years. Yeah. Catherine Rogers, three years. And that leaves Nick Walden, three years. All right. On to Meisner's. Jennifer Clark, one year. Blake Watts, two years. Gail Schwartz, three years. And Jennifer Bean, three years. Anthony Watson, I'm sorry, this was um, Anthony Shears. Oh, Anthony Watson, one year. Norman Cook, two years. Patricia Bowman, three years. And James Tilton, four years, or three, three years. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Alderman Guest. Ed Farthing, one year. David Roberts, two. Ed Susan Walker, three. And Jerisha Farr, three. Zagaroli, Frank Young, one. Alan Barnhart, two. Jeff Hale, three. And Burke Wyatt, three. Paige Brigham, one. Rob Dickerson, two. Jory Chain, three. And Alan Jackson, three. And finally, we have the mayors. Charlie Dixon, one. Mike Thomas, two. Stacy Rash, three. And Allison Holtzman, three. Here we go. There you go. All right, you got it. Yep, you got your bond commission. Well, I'd just like to say thanks to everyone who submitted an application to that. We had a total of how many? Was it? Oh, it was uh, over 150. Yeah. It's, I think a lot of interest. Quite honorable of our citizenry that put out that, uh, you know, wanting to join this and help improve Hickory. Thank you all. Well, I think it's also important to remind folks that. You know, as people rotate off or if people can't serve for whatever reason, that their application is still valid and that people can still put in applications at any time. 
That's right. Yeah, thanks. Because in, in the event that someone couldn't serve or something came up, then we would probably revert back to the applications that we currently have. Uh, don't have any other nominations for boards or commissions. No. No, thank you. Okay. Well, we need to make a motion to approve all the nominations. We did that. No, you've already done that. We did that. We approved your, your bond commission. Well, let's, let's just make it formal and make a, have a motion to approve the order in which they were um, okay. inside. I make approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries unanimously. All right. Okay. So you've got item C, presentation of petitions and requests, which we don't have any. <coughs> Matters not on the agenda. Any? General comments by a council member. I would like to say on your first time that you did a very outstanding job. Well, um, thank you. I, I hope that that this was the only time I have to do this, but I would like to say it's not over yet. Oh, it's not over yet. <laughs> There's still another piece. <laughs> well, thank you very much. You're all very kind. In, in a moment, say, you still have time to raise your grade. Yes. <laughs> well, and, and also to clarify where the mayor is today, you know, he's and, and he wouldn't say this if he were here, but he has a very prestigious appointment on the local government commission the very body that will approve our bonds when it's time for us to go sell the bonds and uh, so he had an lgc board meeting this afternoon and he was not he was not able to get back from raleigh in time for this meeting so well, we're proud of him for serving at that state level it's a great honor for him and for the city uh, as we move forward does that uh, have any kind of uh, interruption or anything with what we're doing and him serving on that board does it now he'll have to get some kind of a ruling from whoever gives counsel to that group as to whether or not he can vote on our on our bond uh, when it comes to them if he's still serving at that point in time. <coughs> at this point, we don't see any. You know, there's not any issues until we get there. Um, when do we anticipate the uh, first meeting of the commission? Yeah, that's a wonderful question. Um, as staff, we've, uh, as you all know, we've re we've begun the review process for firms uh, who. Um, provided qual their qualifications to uh, work for the city as the bond administrators. Uh, our thought is we'd like to get them, get that to you and get them on board and then hold our first meeting as we have those folks uh, in place so that they can be part of this process from the beginning. Okay. Soon. Soon, yeah. Soon. Soon. Can somebody from staff officially notify these folks that they've been appointed? Absolutely. Because I haven't actually told my folks yet. <laughs> be happy to. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, on that program piece, will will you be uh, giving council an opportunity to meet um, before a decision is made? I know council will have to approve the contract. Uh, will, will council have an opportunity to meet and then ask questions of the program administrators? Uh, we had not anticipated that. Uh, we certainly can. Uh, we we had the first round of interviews over the last two days. Uh, have some follow-up questions and, of course, references and things like that that we would need to uh, to check and to verify. Um, you all are certainly welcome to do that if you'd like to. We could arrange that. Um, we don't typically do that when we hire architects and engineers for various things, but it's really up to you all if you'd like to. And I would, uh, I mean, I, I think, how about this? How about if you, if, if a council member would like to, prior to it coming before council, have a telephone conference or ask questions or sure. whatever that, that that we do that we not do a phone meeting. Be fine. Yeah. And just to remind you, the way the law works, um, you make a selection based on their qualifications. So who you feel like best meets the needs of what the city is trying to accomplish, and then you enter into negotiations with that firm. So it's not like an RFP where they've given us dollar amounts and a bid per se. Uh, they have come to us and said, here's the kind of projects we worked with on. We've had a pretty extensive uh, request for qualifications that they've responded to. As I mentioned, seven staff members uh, met with them over the last two days and had about a two-hour conversation with each of them, uh, reviewing their qualifications. 
uh, you select who you think is the most qualified, and then you enter into negotiations. If you cannot come to uh, an agreement, then you go to the second most qualified party. So by state statute, that's how that process works. Okay. And we thought we had uh, you know, three good, three good groups with uh, three good presentations. session for approval of minutes of uh, January 20th, 2015 and discuss an economic development matter. I move under that pretext. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, you yeah. 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 yeah.